I just want to take this opportunity to welcome each one of us to our glorious Sunday service. Bona sifue. Feel free, feel welcome, feel at the feet of Jesus. Bona sifue. And for our audience who are online, we welcome each one of you also to enjoy the service. Bona sifue. And so we're just going to pray as the worship team takes over. Let's pray. Loving and everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace this morning. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of life you have given and to reach one of us, O oh God. We thank you, Lord, for what you are about to do even in our lives this day, Jehovah Father, as we trust you, O oh God, for something new in our lives, Jehovah Father. We surrender our service, we surrender our lives unto you, that you may have your own way, O oh God. Have your own way in our life, Jehovah Father. We give you all the praise, glory, and honor, because I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Let's enjoy the service. Praise God. Praise God. Are we happy to be in the presence of the Lord? I doubt. If you are happy and it's time of prayer and worship, all of us will be up on our feet to praise and dance the Lord. Praise Jesus. Amen. Um, John chapter 12 verse 32 uh, says, And I, when I'm lifted up uh, from the earth, will draw all the people to myself. So this morning as we praise the Lord, as we lift him up, He's going to draw us all to his, to him. Praise Jesus. Uh, so, join us together as we praise and worship. God is good, I will lift his name higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift his name higher. For the Lord is good, I will lift his name higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift his name higher. For the Lord is good, I will lift his name Everywhere I go, I will lift His name higher. For the Lord is good, I will lift His name higher. Everywhere I go, I will lift His name higher. I will lift His name higher. Higher, higher, I will lift His name higher. 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 So good to us. That's why we worship His name this morning. That's why we lift Him up this morning. For when we lift Him up, He's going to draw all of us to Him. Praise Jesus. We lift You higher, higher, higher.
him all the praise, all the honor, all power, all glory belongs to our God. Amen. Let's appreciate the worship team. Thank you so much. We thank God for this session. We thank God for what he has done and what he's doing and what he's yet to do in our lives. Bona si fiwe. We are going to welcome the minister of the word who shall take us through from here. He's none other than our pastor, Miswa Sedi. We're happy to be in the presence of God and we thank him for the gift of life. We thank God that we are alive today because of his mercies and his grace. And we thank him for such love that he has for us, that he has made us his children. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. amen. We'd like to share from the word of God. And I would like to ask us just to open our hearts and let the Lord move by his spirit and do his will in our lives. Let him do with us what he desires to do today. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We're going to share on a subject taking care of the body as the temple of God. Taking care of the body as the temple of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You know, when you are expecting visitors, and you're preparing yourself for the visitors who are coming, you prepare yourself accordingly. You think of who is in the team or who is coming, the value that placed on them. Should you lay down a red carpet or not? What kind of dish, what kind of food are you going to prepare? And so, as we come before the Lord, and we are talking about taking care of the body as the temple of the Lord God, then I am saying that as we take care of our bodies, we are doing it conscious of whose property it is. The Bible says that we are not our own, we belong to God. We are not our own, we belong to God. And so, our body being the temple of God, and we are taking care of this body as the temple of God, then we are doing it consciously that God is the owner. And so how do we do it for the Most High? How do we do it for God who has given it to us? You know, talking about the temple of God, the houses, the buildings that we gather in are not the temple of God. These are places where we gather for the purpose of fellowship and praise and worship to God. But we, our bodies, we ourselves, are the temple of God. And so as we gather in these places, this place becomes the church. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This is a church because you and I are gathered here. You and I, the body that are here, are the temple of the Lord and he dwells in us. Praise the name of the Lord. A temple or the dwelling place of God, as I said, is one that he made for himself. One that he made for himself. And who made the body? God. He made us for himself, for fellowship and for the praise of his name. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The buildings, as I said, are not, but you and I are. In John chapter 4 and verse 24, Jesus said, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Therefore, true worship proceeds from the spirit within us. True worship proceeds from the spirit that dwells within us. We are the body, we are the temple of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Romans chapter 8 and verse 11. Romans 8 verse 11. Roman, uh, Apostle Paul said, but if the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwell in you, the spirit that raised Christ from the dead will 
quicken. In other words, we'll put life to your mortal bodies. The spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead will quicken, will put life into the mortal bodies that you and I are. The spirit that dwells on the inside of us. Brethren, we are the temple of God, the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Our bodies must be taken care of knowing we are taking care of the temple of God, not our own. The way we would clean it up, wash it, feed it, adorn it, and so on, we're doing it not like I want to look today and so on, but I'm taking care of the temple of God. How would God look at me the time I'm taking care of his temple and smile or feel like mm, he doesn't care who I am? The Bible says that the Almighty God does not dwell in houses built with hands. We see this in Acts chapter 7, verses 48 to 50. Acts chapter 7, verses 48 to 50. However, the most high God, I read from the New King James Version. However, the most high God does not dwell in temples made with hands, as the prophet says, verse 49, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Has my hand not made all these things? Has the hand of God not made all these things that we see, that we know, that we work with, and so on? Good enough for the purpose of worshiping God, blessing God, and so on. But we are the temple of the living God. This is because of Christ who died for us, saved us, washed us, made us God's children. He says, Jesus said, that he would ask of the Father and the Holy Spirit, and they will come and make their dwelling place, their abode in us. And so you, believer, you and I, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, and so we must be conscious of what we do with this body that is the temple of the Holy Spirit. How do we take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit? You know, if we would be going to church, the building, clean it up, arrange things and so on, make it look good, before we take care of the body that is the temple of God, we are doing what is for a purpose of the believers coming to worship, but God does not dwell there, we may find ourselves playing highest form of hypocrisy. Let us take care of the body of Jesus Christ before we can do the others. Praise the Lord. And when we're taking care of the body that is the temple of the Holy Spirit, then we are praying and trusting God to help us that we do not err, that we don't mess up, that we don't bring in anything that defiles. Oh, this reminds me of a young man by the name Daniel. We read this in Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. Can we have it there? Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 in the New King James Version. What does it say? I would like us to read it together, please. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. This is a young man that believed in God. This is a young man who knew he was. He knew who he was. He knew what his body was. Do we have it there? Okay. It says, but Daniel purposed in his heart. You know, he decided... He purposed in his heart, but Daniel purposed, yes, here it is. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. He was so concerned about the body, the temple of God. And so he noticed that whatever was prepared for him, and it was special food, yeah, he noticed that this was not good for him, not good for his body, not good for the temple of God, and so he said that he would not defile himself. The food was tasting good, I believe, it was nice, yeah, made in the king's palace, but good as it was, Daniel was careful what he puts in the temple 
of God. And so he said, no, 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 feed me on vegetables, feed me on water. Oh, here is Daniel, a young man who is determined to take care of the body, the temple of God. Just to paraphrase and to give you the picture, read it all, please, later. The concern was that Daniel was going to grow thin. Daniel would be malnourished. Daniel was not going to look good the way he would if he ate that food. But then Daniel stood his ground. Ah, just quickly, let us look at verse 15 of the same Daniel chapter 1, verse 15. A test that is done. You know, when you put things in the test tube, then you want to see the result afterward. What is the result? After Daniel was not fed on that delicacy of the king, what was the result? After Daniel had taken care of the temple of God, what was the result in chapter 1 and verse 15? What does it say? And at the end of 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies. Did you see that? Did you see what I've seen? Did you read what I've read? Did we read it together? After 10 days, <laughs> being fed on what he requested, water and vegetables, they looked fatter, looked bigger, shiny, looking good. So it was not the food that was going to matter. Daniel knew what it meant to take care of the temple of the living God. Amen. Amen. In the Old Testament, the temple was a sacred meeting place for Israelites where they went to worship and make sacrifices and prayers to God. Jesus came. When Jesus came, believers in him became the temples of God because he shed his blood on the cross, washed the believers from their sins, made them his own, and the Holy Spirit came to dwell, to indwell the believers Bodies of believers became the temple of the living God. You and I, believers who are here or hearing from wherever you are, you are a temple of the living God. And therefore, we must be careful how we treat this temple that is of the living God. What we put in this temple which is of the living God. How we adorn this temple that is of the living God. How we feed this temple that is of the living God. What do we do? with the temple that is of the living God. So we are saying, we're talking about taking care of the body as the temple of the living God. Amen. Amen. Let me put it this way. We need to be careful where we go and what we do with ourselves, that is with the temple of the living God. Don't get yourself into an area or an environment where you are likely to be tempted that you may defile the temple of the living God. Daniel, referring back to Daniel, he was in the king's palace. It would have been very easy for him with the appetite, looking at the food, to say, this one I will eat. At least this one is nice. But Daniel stood the test. Daniel does not fall into the temptation. But I'm saying that not all of us are strong. The time that we think we are strong, that's when the enemy will strike so hard. And so keep yourself away from the environment or the area where you are likely to be tempted. If ever at one time, this is an example, and it could be true, if ever at one time you are, before you got saved, before you knew the Lord Jesus Christ, you lived a life that was bound in alcoholism, for that matter. Please don't walk and dwell a lot around the bars, near the friends, the company that drink and so on. They tell, take, take a little. No, you, you may be tempted. However strong you think you are, I am telling you from what I know is true. Once you are said, once you are delivered, once you come out of that den, please don't go around there, don't linger around there because Strong as you think you are, Paul says, let him that thinks he's strong be careful, watch out, lest you fall. And so let me put it this way. If you know that you are not a swimmer, 
and you know you're not a swimmer and you know you cannot swim, please don't play around <laughs> the waters, the, the, the swimming pool and the river waters, however, how, however good it is. You know, if you have to watch swimmers do their bit, yeah, and it looks so nice and so on. Remember last time we were talking about dissociation? You may be watching that and you get carried away. And in your mind, you join in the motion while they're going like so, and you fall in the water. Woe unto you. It will be disastrous for you. Don't stay near the much water. If you are not a swimmer, please keep away from there. The body must be healthy both physically and spiritually. The body must be healthy both spiritually or physically and spiritually. We should be healthy physically and spiritually. Let us see uh, some points here. Point number one. Point number one, how to keep our bodies healthy spiritually and physically too. Point number one, we see in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 11. Exodus chapter 20, verse 11. Here we read about the great concern that God had, that he has made this scripture be written, how we would take care of our body. He's talking about rest. The Bible says that in six days, God worked. He did the creation, he was creating and on the seventh day, after creating everything that he did and he saw it was good, the Bible says in the, on the seventh day he took a rest. And so, rest is important for the body. Rest is important for this temple of the Lord. If you go on and on and on nonstop, then it's like an engine of a vehicle that just runs and runs and no servicing, no checking on the oil. And you don't even check whether there is well in the petrol tank or not you just go on until the vehicle stops hey rest is needed rest is necessary for our bodies otherwise if you go 24 48 hours without sleep and so on you may get into a point of sitting before the lord in time of worship and your head goes like this and you agree and say amen at the wrong time yes. yeah when somebody said we must avoid the devil the devil let me not say this loud. Let me say it slowly. The devil tempted me and I hit somebody so hard. And then you say, Amen. What are you saying, Amen? <laughs> what are you saying, Amen? Because you are not present. You are not there. You are not in the spirit. Hmm. We need to give our bodies rest so that we are refreshed and we are able to move on and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. We must work on for the six days of the week if you're counting from wherever you begin whether it is from monday tuesday wednesday thursday when your seventh day falls please take a rest and i'm not saying that for the six days you just work and stay away from god away from prayer away from fellowship no 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 the bible tells us to pray without ceasing and so we are conscious of god's presence with us and we are conscious of our feeding from the word of god and the presence of god and so on but we set aside a day. We set aside a day, and that day is not for sleeping and maybe watching TV and so on, but a day for being in the presence of God, like we're doing today, being in the presence of God, worshiping and praising Him and giving glory, and bringing our petitions to Him too. You know, a time to come and say, Father, this is what I am in, this is what I'm going through so hard, Lord, help me. This is a day that we must set aside for God to be in the presence of God. Praise the Lord. The other days we were working and at the same time worshiping in our heart and singing, when he calls me, I will answer. I'll be somewhere working for the Lord. You're washing dishes, mama, and so on. And you are a carpenter and you're going like so. With it, and you're saying, Lord, I bless you. You are good. You're so good. Thank you, Lord, for giving me life and so on. So you're not away from God for the six days. But... Set a day, a time for rest. Praise the Lord. If your days have been eight to six, coming out and going through traffic jam, going to work and so on, set a day when you can say, Lord, today is a day for you. Rest. Praise the Lord. Yeah. This means that we should labor, but then we should have a day to rest. Spiritual health is emphasized here. That it is not a day for just taking away and just lazing about, if I can put it that way, or living in the emptiness, but a day, a time before the Lord God. Third epistle, that's 
third letter of John, verse 3, it's only one chapter, third letter of John, verse 2, talks about being prosperous. says, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Praise the Lord. Taking care of the body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. In the number one of the Beatitudes, the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, Jesus spoke to his disciples. The number one is chapter 5 verse 3. He says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is to say that we must keep seeking. Poverty here refers to longing, searching, seeking, desiring to have more. It's a dangerous state to be in, known as complacency, where we would get to a point of saying, I've had enough of God. Oh, I may take a rest now. Uh, let me rest now until another time when I feel hungry and thirsty for God, I can look for him. It's a dangerous place to be in for a believer. And so we are saying, we're reading the Beatitude. Jesus himself said, blessed are the poor in heart for theirs is the kingdom, meaning they are always seeking more and more of God, seeking more and more of God. They're not saying I've had enough. They're saying I haven't had it. When they're saying I've had enough, they're saying I'm rich, I'm okay, I can rest. So blessed are the poor in heart, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. It teaches us against becoming complacent regarding the hungering and thirsting after God. Point number two. Point number two is let us love what God has given us. Let us love what God has given us. And we are saying that God has given us this body. He made it for himself, a temple for him to dwell in. So let us love what he has given us, including the body. And what you love, you take care of. Amen. What you love, you take care of. And I want to tell you, if you did not know, that um, without knowing or accidentally, you have love for yourself. <laughs> Yes, you have love for yourself. Should you feel a little cold, you look for something warm to put on. And when you're adorning yourself, maybe to go out or to come to church, then you check yourself in the mirror and see, how, how am I looking? Do I look good? <laughs> and so on. You love yourself. But listen, let us love with the mind that we are the temple of God. Take care of this body as the temple of the living God. Praise the Lord. Love everything that God has given to us. Our bodies are temple of God. He's given to us, and so we must love and take care of it. We must remember that we were created in God's image. We are wonderfully and fearfully made. Praise the Lord. Psalms 139 and verse 14. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. God took time to make you the way he did. So love the way God has made you. Shorter or shorter, shorter or taller, <laughs> whichever shape or form, the Lord made you that way. Love what God has given you. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you have some education or you have some money, some wealth and so on, love what God has given you. And please don't covet for what he has not given you yet. <laughs> right? I talked of education, I talked of wealth. But then the question here is, don't be like, but why did he give me no money? Why has he not given me some big physique? Why am I so thin and frail? No, no, no. Love what God has given you and take care of it. And this is, including the body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Love your skin. <laughs> the color of your skin. Love your skin. Did God make, make you dark, black, whatever you want to say? Bright, light? We say, Jesus loves the little children, red and yellow and so on. Huh? So are you yellow? <laughs> are you red? <laughs> are you black? Are you white? Love what God has given you. Praise the Lord. Do you have long hair? Do you have short hair? Do you have nothing? Are you bald-headed? Love what God has given you. Praise the Lord. Our bodies are not our own. They belong to God. And so, 
We should remain pure and clean. We should avoid uncleanness, unnecessary impurities. Paul encourages us to remember that our bodies do not belong to us but to God. Christ Jesus purchased us with a high price when he died on the cross. He purchased us with a high price, his death and resurrection. We should refrain from succumbing to temptations, live healthy, healthy life, both physically and spiritually. Love our bodies, for it is God-given. We should avoid temptations and anything that would pollute or cause our bodies to be not what it should be, a holy place for God's dwelling. Praise the Lord. Brethren, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. As I said, God took time to create us. Jesus gave himself on the cross for us. And his blood washing us, making us his own. The Holy Spirit has come to dwell in us. Oh, what a blessing. All of this we can't take for granted. God took time to create us, so specially so. Jesus laid down his life for us on the cross. The Holy Spirit has come to indwell us. What more would we ask for? Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Taking care of our body as the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yes, bodies, not only our minds or our heart, but also all of us. Also all of us. And when we remember this, then we will not just be talking of loving the presence of God on the inside of us and worshiping and saying, Lord, you're so good and so on. But we will love this flesh here. We would love our skin. We would love our bones also. Yes? Amen. If there's any bone sticking out wrongly and so on. <laughs> there was a time I had an accident as a boy. I was a young man and I jumped over something and I hit my elbow. <clears throat> And this bone here came out like that. I, I pushed it back, but it was pushing out. So. Now, if it remains so, I would still have to love that bone and live with it. Yes? <laughs> Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, which we talk about very many times. Apostle Paul is beseeching us not to conform to this world. He says, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. Romans 12 verse 1. I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God. Present yourself, present your bodies a living sacrifice. Living sacrifice. The body belongs to God. Amen. Luke chapter 12 and verse 22 to 24. Luke chapter 12 verses 22 to 24. And Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. We are cautioned not to be anxious about our needs. Instead, turn to prayer and surrender to God our anxieties. In Luke chapter 21, verse 34, Luke chapter 21 and verse 24, here we see that the warning is here that we should not get or descend into drunkenness and we should not be weighed down with anxieties not to get down with drunkenness, not to be weighed down with anxieties. By the way, it's very easy to get into drunkenness. All that one does is to get into the wrong company, whether you were a drunkard or before, maybe you grew up far away from anything called drunkenness, but company that you keep would get you there. The company that you keep would get you there. And one day, without realizing, you take one sip and take another and so on, and you feel like when you took this, you got some high, and then when you took the same, the high didn't get there, so you take a little bit more, and then you feel it. Then the next time you take that, the high isn't there, and then you take a little bit more and you get there before you realize you are alcoholic, addicted. So what we are saying here is we must not allow ourselves to be weighed down and descend into drunkenness. This is in the scripture, brethren, Luke chapter 21, verse 34. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 5 tells us to put to death sexual immorality, impurity, and evil desires which are of the earth. They defile us. 
They defile us. They destroy the temple of God. We should not entertain sinful thoughts. Apostle Paul also taught Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. He said he taught Timothy to flee temptation, to flee from temptation. We are also to flee from temptation. We are not stronger than what we ought to be. We need the Lord. We need to know who we are. We need to take care of our body as the temple of the Holy Spirit and flee temptation. As I said before, don't linger around waters. If you know you are not a swimmer, you cannot swim, you'll fall in. By the way, if you think I'm lying, try it one day and you come and say, I burnt my fingers. I thought you were kidding. Oh, it is true. Please don't try it. Don't try it. Don't try it. You tell a child, don't touch fire, it will burn you. And the child goes like, Mommy said I shouldn't touch, let's see. And then the child is burnt. No, don't be like that. Please, don't go try. Don't go try. Keep off. Praise the Lord. Point number three. Honor God and meditate on his word. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11. We already saw that. And I would like us just to think also of Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. The word, this book of the law, must not depart from your mouth, but you will meditate upon it day and night, that you may seek to do all that is written in it, and then you will have good success. Praise the name of the Lord. Point number four. The body is a temple of God. Do not drag it. I already mentioned about uh, what we put in, and so Daniel did not allow himself to get into the feasting of the kind of delicacies that he knew was going to defile him. Don't drag it. What are drugs? We can't get into that now because of time, but one day we will. But you know, as I mentioned that, all of us here have talked about it, have learned about it, have known, maybe have gone through it and so on. Drugs defile the body of Jesus Christ. Once someone takes alcohol, they can't walk straight even if they were always straight and tall and nice and so on, they begin to go like so. What has happened? Imbalance in the head. Don't drag the body of Jesus Christ. I used to see some, when I was young, I saw some people riding on a bicycle and when they were drunk, they would go that way on the road and that way on the road and the vehicle is coming, pee, 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 and they go like that. Why do you ride your bicycle all over? The road is not yours. And it's not themselves, it is here. Don't drag the body of Jesus Christ, the body, the temple of God. Take care of this. Take care of this body. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. I would like us to not go on too long, but just to give us some, some points here. I'd like us to spell the word temple. We're talking about the temple, the temple of the Holy Spirit. I'd like us to spell the word temple and See the, the meaning that we get from every word there. The acronym, 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 the acronym of this word, temple. Let's see the acronym of this temple, this word called temple. Number one is T. When you're spelling the word temple, you start with T. So you write T. T, are we there, T? Yes. yes. Number one is talk. Talk. Talk to this body. This body hears you. All is consciousness. So what you are thinking, that's another T, what you are thinking will either bring relief or hurt. That's a number T. Another T is touch. Touch the area that is painful, the area that is challenging, and claim healing in the name of Jesus you are a Christian, you're a believer, you're a child of God. Touch the place that is challenging, that's painful, and claim the healing. Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, These signs shall follow you. The believers will lay hand on the sick, and they shall recover. So healing, touch. Praise the Lord. Temple, temple of the living God, E. Next letter is E. Exercise. <laughs> Exercise, stretching and moving the body will keep it feeling good. Find something that appeals to you, whether biking, walking, jogging, 
if you're going to a treadmill or whatever, if it is swimming, make sure you're a swimmer, don't go in the water if you can't swim, eh? swimming and so on, you know. <laughs> Walk with a friend, make it fun. Your body will thank you when your legs start aching. Know it is time to move about and do something. Walking keeps your legs, feet, and the rest of your body feeling good. E, another E, eat. Eat healthy foods. We already talked about uh, delicacies and so on, what may look nice before our eyes, and yet they may defile the body, so take care of that. Don't eat just anything. There is M, temple, temple, M, M. M is for mirror. Am I too fast if you're writing? Please try, write in shorthand. When I was growing up, there was something was called shorthand. It's no longer there anymore. Uh, we did shorthand, 100 words a minute and so on. Write in shorthand if you, if you can't uh, go at the pace. But mirror is M, mirror. <laughs> mirror, mirror on the wall. <laughs> mirror on the wall. Who is the most beautiful one of all? Who is the most beautiful? I'm asking, who is the most beautiful? Yes, say it again and again. Me, I am the most beautiful. Somebody may look at you and think, you think you're beautiful? Yes, you are. Because we said in Psalms 139 verse 14, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're beautiful. If nobody told you you're beautiful, tell yourself, I am. Yes? Yes. And this, oh God, oh, is, this, is, this is inside you. Say that to yourself every time you look at yourself in the mirror, saying, I am is your truth. God is mighty and he's inside of you and he's I am. God is I am. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. P. P. Temple. P. Pray. Pray. Pray and affirm perfect health. Whether your hand or your leg or your head is what you can't just imagine. Pray. Whether you're praying, standing, kneeling, sitting, dancing, or singing your prayer, wholeness is your divine birthright. Wholeness is your divine birthright. Pray. Praise the Lord. Temple. Next is L. L. Love. Love. Love every part of you inside out. When you love yourself, you are respecting, honoring, and appreciating all that God has given you and who God is on the inside of you. When you love and respect yourself, others will love and respect you too. Temple. The last letter is E. E. Eternal you. Eternal you. Eternal you is your human body. I believe that heaven, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, that is the Trinity, is within us because we are the temple of the Holy God and that we will experience it to a degree that we become conscious of it. Our eternal wholeness continues till it is time to slip off through the veil into the other side. Glory, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Temple, take care of the temple of the living God the temple of the living God. Time may not allow us to go on further and say more. There is a lot to learn and discuss about the body, the temple of the living God, but we might not go through all of that for now, for today. I'd like us to remember that when we give our bodies what is right according to God's will and direction, God's guidance through the word of God, the Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Let us live by the word of God. And the word of God will lead and guide us into what to do with ourselves, with our lives, and so on. My mother used to pray before she finished the cooking. <laughs> she would put the vegetable, whatever it is, on fire and pray as it is cooking, blessing it and saying, Lord, let it cook according to your way. It will be nice and nourishing our bodies. And when she was doing the ugali, before she put the, the, the flour into the boiling water, she would pray, as though if she did it before putting the flour, something would go wrong. And then, after that, when she brings the food for us to eat, 
she would pray again, <laughs> blessing the food, and she would pray for every food, vegetable, ugali, and whatever it is by name, and she would say even the salt that was put in it. What a prayerful mom. God bless your heart. She's in heaven. You see, when we live by the word of God and his guidance, we will pray and the Lord will guide us in all that we need to do, even what we should do with our bodies, which is the temple of the living God. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we must not shun prayer. One time I visited somebody who was very, very, she's now in heaven, not my mom though. Can I tell you? My mother-in-law. <laughs> I visited my mother-in-law one time and I didn't find her home. She had gone out to some shamba somewhere and had come all the way from Nairobi. This is not yesterday. She passed on some many years ago. And so, when I asked where she was, I asked in the neighborhood, they did not know where she was. Somebody said, maybe she's gone to some shamba, she goes somewhere. I said, okay, I go looking. Looking and I don't know where. Then I saw her walking, coming from far. And when we met her with the excitement, greeting, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, my son, praise the Lord, mom, praise the Lord. Then she stopped and asked him, before you left to come, did you pray? <laughs> <laughs> it was a challenge that hit me. You know, what she meant was, if I prayed, maybe the Lord would have kept her at home, or maybe the Lord would have directed me what to do and so on. But she said, before you left to come, did you pray? There I was caught. I said, thank you, ma'am, I'll be praying. <laughs> Pray, 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 brethren, let us pray. God will lead and guide us in what to do in taking care of this temple, this body, the temple of the Holy Spirit. And this temple of the Holy Spirit, who we are, those without the Spirit of God on the inside, those who are not saved, those who have not received Christ as Lord and Savior of their lives, they are not the temple of the Holy Spirit. The temple of the Holy Spirit is the body that is sanctified, washed, cleansed, cleaned up, and room is made for God himself to come and dwell in. We're talking of the dwelling place of God. The best you can do if you're listening to me and you have not received Christ as Lord and Savior of life, please turn your life to Jesus Christ and become a temple of the Holy Spirit. You will live a happy life. You will save yourself a lot of danger and harm, accidents and sicknesses and all that non-believers go through or meet in this world. It's a good opportunity to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to come into your heart. You will become a temple of the Holy Spirit when Jesus washes you with the blood that was shed on the cross and makes you clean. Then the Holy Spirit comes in and takes over and the Lord God and God the Son, God the Father will dwell on the inside of you. You will become the temple of the Holy Spirit, so blessed indeed with eternity. I would request you to pray with me as we ask the Lord to remain leading and guiding us in our lives as the temple that he dwells in. And for those who are not saved, please open your heart. Let the Lord come into your heart. Father God, we thank you for your love and mercies. Thank you, Lord, for salvation through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray that those among us that have not turned their lives to you yet, O oh God, by the convincing power of the Holy Spirit, convict them, O oh God, and help them to turn to you through repentance and putting trust and faith in you, O oh God. Lord, that we will be the temple, the kind of temple that you will dwell in. Help us, O oh Lord, who know you, that we shall live by your word, according to your word, O oh God, that we shall not defile the temple, this temple that is your dwelling place. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It's yet another time for us to uh, come before the Lord, to worship him with our Offering and tithes. Buona sifue. For the people who are on, online, our baby number is 797748. 797748. Then you can indicate if it is tithe, if it is offering, if it is for arms or for projects. 
We also do have uh, MPESA number 07059275516. Amen. So let's just prepare ourselves to worship the Lord with our offerings, tithes, arms, uh, and all forms of giving as the Lord leads you. God loves a cheerful giver. That's the first I'm giving you for today. We have been blessed so much by the teachings and as the temple of God, as we love the temple, we take care of it. Even worshipping also in terms of giving, we are also taking care of the temple of God. Bonus if you so if you are ready with your offering, with your gift, I will just request us to arise as we pray and as we give. Bonus if you <coughs> Let's just pray. Our loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne of grace uh, this hour. We thank you, Lord, for this fire you've been with us. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of your word. You've ministered unto us, O oh God, that we are your temple. And Lord, we just thank you even for what you've given us today, for what you've reminded us, O oh God, that, Father, we should know how to take care of ourselves, O oh God. We thank you, King of glory, even for this opportunity. We have come before your presence, O oh God, to worship you with all forms of giving. We pray to you, Father, that, Lord, you may receive that which you have purposed in our hearts to give unto you, Jehovah, our Father. As we give out our offerings, as our love gifts, our tithes, our hands, and any other forms of giving, Jehovah, Father, we pray that you shall receive it, O oh God. We pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. God is here and that to bless us with the Spirit's quickening power. See the crowds already bending, ways to drop the grateful shower. Let it go, Let it come, O oh Lord, we pray thee. Let the shelter shower no blessings fall.
appreciate the choir with a vision. Amen? Amen. Let's appreciate them. <laughs> we really had missed your ministry. But we thank God. At least now you're there ministering to us. Buona sifuya. So we appreciate God at uh, this day for what he has done. I believe you're blessed. The Lord has met you at your point of need. Yes. We have come to the end of our service today and we are looking forward to seeing you next Sunday. Yes.